I have a couple of goals today, and it's a little bit hard to follow what just happened on the screen, I have to say, because it, uh, there's, there's a piece of the data that I'm going to share with you that shows how important it is to think about what Hal said. So my, my goal is to share with you some really cool things around AI, get you excited about it, get you engaged in the conversation. It is a freight train that is coming, and it is either something you're going to get on board with, or it's going to run you over. And so I want you to be a part of that. And then I want to pivot a little bit and maybe uh, come out of left field and throw some information at you that'll make you think about things a little bit differently. So my wife's goal is that I make it through the whole conversation today without dropping an F-bomb. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So um, in the big scheme of things, there, there's a few things that I want to share with you. The first one is Mark Cuban just recently said that there are the businesses that are good at AI, and then there's everybody else, and they're going to go out of business. Now, I'm not one of those guys that's going to stand up here and tell you that AI is going to replace your job. I don't think that's what's going to happen. But what I will tell you is that I think the person, it doesn't matter if you're a business owner, a business leader involved in the community, in a nonprofit, what I believe is that the threat to you, the person who's going to replace you, is the person who knows how to use AI better than you do. And then maybe AI is going to replace that person. Um, but it's, it's critical uh, that, you, that you get on board with this, you understand it. it is going to be a driver for force in the future. So I wanted to walk you through some of the cool things that are going on with ChatGPT. I'm going to assume that a lot of people have already engaged with it some, but I want to throw some more complex prompts at you so that you can actually see the full power of the tool. And then we're going to make a few pivots. So in this, in, in this example, we have act as an expert Instagram social media marketer. I want you to do some research for me. Tell me three frustrations, three desires, and three fears that community banks experience with their technology. Put it in a table format, label the y-axis one through three, the x-axis frustrations, desires, and fears, and boom. It, it creates a strategy for you to target your exact target market with links so that you can verify the research and, and put something together. And it, it tells you a great deal of detail that I can't fit on the screen. So in addition to that, I said, that's cool. I like what you shared. Let's take it one step further and let's make a social media post out of it. So it made a social media post, three of them, in fact. Take it one step further, give me some images to go with those posts so that they'll engage the audience. Boom. Three images to go with the post that speak to community banks that help it all to come together. So when we think about Chat GPT and AI, it's not just about writing a blog or whatever. It's about challenging the system to think and do any problem that you have in your business. Ask it. There's a good chance that it can help you solve it in some way. And there's some tools out there that can even help you brainstorm on how to solve those problems. One of my favorites is a, is a tool that's called pi.ai. Pi.ai. It's unbelievable. OK, so can you provide me with a mathematical formula for the most important KPIs in the stainless steel manufacturing business? Now, I have no idea if any of this is right, uh, but it looks really good to me. Uh, uh, what I would tell you is that, that most of these tools are written to, to create the average. The, the outcome of, of the tool is to, is to produce the average. And so chances are this is somewhere between 70% and 80% accurate. And where the value of the human is going to come in is when we can take that 70 to 80% and get it to 100%. That's where the magic, that's where the value is. So if you use the tools to drive your business and your organization, and you can help it, or it can help you to get that first part done, then your real value comes in at that 100% magic level. And that is the art and science of how to use the tools. Here is a, a legal document, Master Services Agreement. I wanted to know what I should be aware of, summarize it. You know, this is a 30-page document that I threw up into the system. Give me the executive summary and tell me anything that I should be worried about. So it gave me an executive summary. Again, it was longer than this. And then it told me the things that I should be worried about. It's pretty powerful. And then it tells you to go see a lawyer for professional assistance. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's here, so that's important that I say that. Um, 
This is another one. This is a profit and loss statement. So here, here's a P&L for a business. You upload it, analyze this data for me, throw some ratios at me in terms of my top expenses in relationship to the uh, revenue of the organization. It went through, it analyzed the data, it found a problem in it, it corrected it, made some assumptions, told me what the assumptions were, and then it created a graph showing me where, where the expenses and the ratios were in the business as it related to that environment. So the tool is very powerful. You can use it for a lot more than just writing the blogs. So get in, get engaged, and learn how to do these things. It sure is a whole lot of fun. Now, uh, this is probably the coolest one, and then we'll move on. It says, good evening. I'd like to build a marketing plan for opening a new retail store for cookies in a new market. Seems appropriate. Uh, please uh, ask me three questions that would be helpful for you to know in building a new marketing plan. Um, make sure it includes TV, social media, print media, email campaigns. I have a budget of $50,000 and I don't know where to spend it, so help me figure all that out. So it asked the three questions so that it can narrow down on the target audience, and then it told me where to spend my money based on the research. Now, this isn't just some made up stuff. This is data behind it that helps me to create a marketing plan. So when it, when it comes to doing new initiatives within the business, there's, there's some pretty unbelievable capabilities in this, in this platform. Okay, so now let's take a pivot. I like to have fun. I decided that we needed to have a theme song for the Think Summit. So I went to Suno, S-U-N-O dot A-I, and I asked it to make a theme song. All I said was I wanted an upbeat big band, and it was for the 417 Think Summit. That was it. I don't dance, not like that. So, I thought that was pretty good. So um, when, when you think about the creative and the tools, it's gonna change the game. We have these down in our booth, so if you wanna come down and make your own music, uh, come check it out, it is really powerful. We also have this tool that I want you to see. Now Now we're gonna go down a little bit of a, a deeper path that starts to get just a little bit creepy. This, this is a tool that, that is called Humantic AI, and it actually goes out on the internet and it, and it grabs information about people, it uses LinkedIn, it uses other things, and it shows you everything you need to know. The, the goal of the software is for it to help professional salespeople reach out to their target audience, to, their, uh, to the decision makers within the business, and tell them how to approach that person, what they should say, what they shouldn't say, the do's and the don'ts, how to write emails, and all of those kind of things. It goes so far as to pull your pers uh, personality profiles so that you know if you've got a high D or if you've got a high I, whatever it may be, this tool has the capability of doing it. And it, it's a little bit creepy. All of the data is already out there. So if you want to see your name on LinkedIn or, or on this tool, come down to the the booth and we'll look you up and you can see what it says about you and how accurate it is. And I'm telling you, it's creepy. It's accurate. <laughs> okay, on the creepy note, we decided, Logan gave us permission, we decided that we needed a virtual Logan. We don't get enough of her, we needed more. Now I'll tell you, it's, it's uh, not 100% polished, but this was a novice team doing this for the first time and it was pretty cool. So, um, excuse me, Tom. Yeah. I think I'd like to speak for myself. Okay. I thought it would be fun to show the audience how real a virtual person can be. Hi everyone, welcome to the 2024 Think Summit. I'm so excited that you're here and know you are going to love all the speakers that we have scheduled. Personally, I'm looking forward to the virtual whiskey as we wrap up today. I know the whiskey is gonna be amazing. Talk to us about what, what you think AI is gonna do and what this audience needs to know about it. There are several things that I think are going to benefit people, from drafting papers, summarizing documents, even contracts, to medical diagnosis and discovery, to even the ability to identify trends and opportunities with business data. As an example, what if I could tell you that by making one small adjustment in your financials, that it would increase your enterprise value by 10% over three years, then tell you the recommendations on how to accomplish the small adjustment. I think the opportunities are limitless. I guess what I'm most excited about is helping people to make the best decisions more quickly. That's pretty awesome. What are you worried about? Like all things, AI can be used for good and for evil. 
Let me give you an example to think about. Hey, hon, it's mom. How's your day going so far? That's awesome. Hey, I'm not going to be able to pick you up today. I'm going to have Phil from the office run by. No, you haven't met him, but he'll be driving a white Ford Explorer. Wow, that's pretty scary. Thanks for sharing that with us, and we appreciate you taking some time to spend the day with us. We'll talk to you later. Of course. Thanks for having me. Are you freaked out? <laughs> It, it's a little bit crazy. The reason I want to—I I call this a freight train—is because ChatGPT was one of the fastest things in the market that made it to 100 million users per month consistently. It took a whopping two months one, once it went mainstream. So when you compare that to these other platforms, that's the the adoption rate uh, that, that goes with it. Now. What I want to do now is, is I want to get away from AI because I'm a data geek and I like to talk about all the things data. And I'm going to start to tell you just a little bit of a story here. So as we start to look at the data around distractions and dependencies, purpose, leadership, and, and violence and hate that is going on in the world, there is a lot of crazy stuff that is out there and some, some interesting things that happen when you start diving into the data itself. So forces in America are throwing 4,000 to 10,000 decisions at us per day, things that we have to make a conscious decision about. The problem is that our RAS system, our brain, only has the ability to process about 2,000, give or take. Some will be 1,500, some will be 2,000. But, but by noon every day, maybe 2 o'clock every day, mentally we're already worn out. And so we're not making good decisions. We have distractions that are going on. And when you, when you break those distractions down and you look at the hours lost every single day, it's at least two hours that's lost every single day. And, and we get to concentrate on something for a whopping 11 minutes before we get distracted or interrupted. And then it takes us a whopping 25 minutes before we get back to work for another 11 minutes. That is absolutely crazy when we, when we think about that. Now let's keep going. Uh, the research shows that 50% of the people have problems focusing and concentrating. The, the people that are uh, under 35 have a bigger problem, and people that are over 55, they tend to do just a little bit better at it. And I would say it's because of the gadgets. And if you want to learn more about all the things that cause the distractions, come down and we'll, we'll share it with you. We don't have time to get into all of the details. Hope versus hopelessness. Now, this, this begins to get just a little bit scary that 57% of Americans say that, that they're asking themselves, how do I find more meaning for my life, more purpose in my life, at least monthly? 21% are asking that, that same question daily, and another 21% are asking it weekly. And then we start to look into the church environment and the hope environment there. There's half as many churches in America as there were 100 years ago, and the confidence has gone from 65% in churches down to 35% in, in the last, uh, since 1973. Uh, so hope is a problem. I think what Hal said couldn't be more right. Here's some more information about job satisfaction. 50 to 60% of people in America are emotionally detached from work. 85 worldwide are detached from work and, and, and find their work dissatisfied. 19% are miserable. 17, 72% of workers say respect is an issue. 56 uh, of employees experience job dissatisfaction due, due to poor communication. 35% uh, cite lack of trust. Gen Z is the, is the biggest problem. 62% disconnected in the worst workplace. You can see where it's going. We've got, a big, we've got a big problem. This is confidence in leadership. The government. Look, look at the trend line. This is people reaching out for help, for mental health. Now, I hope that this is because it's more available and that we're, we're doing a good job of communicating it. That's what I hope. But this is the one that scares me the most. Yep. This is suicides per day, per month, on a monthly basis. That's why I'm so happy that we've got the Warrior's Journey here in our community helping us to combat this issue. It's amazing. So, here's violence. It, an average of 20% violence has been increasing since 2017 and 18, and, it's, and it continues to get worse. We hear it in the news, we hear it in the media. So, what does all that mean? When you take all of that and you put it together and you overlay it on life, and then 
you, you put that in conjunction with AI, there, it can tell and, and start to present a really challenging story. And that's the story that I, I want you to think about. That's the left turn. So Elon Musk said that later on next year, that AI is gonna be smarter than any single human on Earth, and within five years, that AI is gonna be smarter than all humans put together. So let me hit you with something. Let me plant a seed for you to think about. What if AI knows you better than you know yourself? What if it can get the data from the internet, from your practices, from all of the sources that it can pull together and it can drive behavior in an environment based on your age, your demographics, your psychographics, that it actually knows what you're gonna do before you even know that you need to make a decision. That day is coming, and that's what I want you to be aware of, because there are bad actors, there are state actors in the world that are gonna use these tools for the wrong reasons, that are gonna to try to gather that data, and they're gonna to try to treat people like cattle. They're gonna to try to herd them into the pen of bad decisions and leave them down dark paths, and it's gonna be up to us to solve the problems. And, and, and here's the crazy thing that I wanna make sure that you hear from me, and that is that when you pull it all together, it, this is the mess, this is what it looks like, and it's actually more chaotic when you bring all of the data, but I'm still excited about the technology. The technology is gonna do amazing things. The things that I'm worried about is the guy that's behind the curtain. Not literally this curtain. <laughs> it's it's going to be the bad actors. It's going to be those people who are focusing on using the technology for the wrong things. And we have, we have to deal with it, and we have to figure it out very soon because of the pace that it's changing. And what I, what I want to share that is that the answer is it's simple, but it's not easy. It's leadership. As crazy as it sounds, it's simple, it's not easy, it's leadership. I would argue that it's next generation leadership, maybe even extreme leadership, that is strong, that's empathetic, that understands that what we have to do as humans isn't to treat people like cattle. That's not leadership. Leadership is inspiring people, it's lifting people up, it's serving the whole human and helping, to know, helping them to know that we've got their back. The mind, the body, the soul, we're here to serve them, we're here to educate ourselves, we're here to educate them, and we're here to make a better, better tomorrow with these technologies and not let these dark ways, the, the bad actors, influence how we behave in our worlds, in our communities, in our businesses. And, and while they're trying to bring the dark, I'm here to tell you that there is only one way to make sure that the light stays on, and that's you. Preach. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. One more time. For one <laughs>